in that. Uh, so what they're asking is there's some line that's parallel to this line and goes through this point. So it looks kind of like that. That's not a very good drawing of it because it's not very straight. But it's supposed to be parallel. We're supposed to find the equation of it. Okay. Good so far? Okay. Uh, so first what they want us to tell them is the slope of that line. Can you know the slope? We can know the slope right away. How did you know that? So it's the same slope, and the slope is right there. Oh. Right? Y equals mx plus b. The slope is right there, and this guy is always what? The y intercept crosses the y axis. So the slope, we would, we would put in here what? Negative 1 half, because it's the same as this guy here. This guy clearly has a slope of negative 1 half. Now we need to know the y-intercept. Right, so we're going to have to write the equation of this line. And then there will emerge the y-intercept. OK, so we want an equation that looks like that. That's what we want. And if we have it, just like this, we have a, a slope of negative 1 half. We know that immediately. We know that this has a, a y-intercept of 4. We would know those things right away. But we don't have that equation. So we're writing that equation. <coughs> What parts of this equation do we have? Yeah. Slope. Got the slope. Got the slope of negative one half. And we have an equal sign. Anything else that we know about this equation at all? That's what we're trying to find. We don't know the y intercept of this line yet. Yes. Well, okay, so this equation is for this line, and the only useful piece of information that we can get from this is that it's parallel, and the only thing that parallel lines have to do with each other is that they have the same slope. Their y-intercepts like, have nothing to do with each other. It doesn't matter. So like, once we have pulled out of this that the slope is negative 1 half, this becomes useless. Right? It's the only piece of information that's useful. Well, we can do y minus 4. Y, okay. So you're using the point slope form that you can do. We'll do that after. Okay. Just so that I don't have to fix that. So do we plug in the uh, Yeah, like this is x, right? And this is y. And for this line, it goes through that point. I don't even like to say it goes to that point. It makes you feel like the line is the thing and the happens to go through points. The line is made of what? Points. Points, right? It is made of points. So I like to say it doesn't go through that point. Like that point belongs to that line. Right? That is a point that the line has. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same as saying it goes through that point. But that's a point that the line, that makes up part of that line. That part of that line uh, uses that point. Which also means that if we plug in x is negative 8 and add this b that we're looking for, we should get what? Um, four. 4. Here's x, here's y. x and y, if you plug in x, you get out y. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, how we, that's how functions work. You plug in the x, you get out the y. Well, now we have an equation where everything is known except for b. And we solve for b now. 4 equals, what's negative 1 half times negative 8? Positive. It's positive. 4 negative times negative is positive, and, and 8 times 1 half is 4. Right. So you can see that b is 0, or you can just go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. b is 0. That's what they wanted to know. Right. I have the equation of the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 0. This is zero. Mm. So we know that it's parallel, so it has the same slope, and we know a point that belongs to the line, so we know at least one example of this x goes in and this y comes out. Okay? That looks like that. 
looks like not on task. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to do another one so that we're not just like hanging on this one example, but that, that example will help a little bit. <coughs> a little bit. It didn't help. Hopefully, it didn't hurt. It'll make you not know the less than when you walk in. Okay. So. Go here. Okay. Now, very similar, but what's different? Perpendicular. I mean, the equation is different, the point is different, but a big difference here is that it's perpendicular. We should be able to tell the slope right away because parallel lines have what kind of slopes? Same. The same slope, and perpendicular lines have opposite. <coughs> opposite. Negative. Yeah. Yeah, negative. Oh, but <laughs> negative reciprocal. Huh? Just that? No. The negative reciprocal. Negative reciprocal. Negative reciprocal. Or opposite reciprocal. If one's negative, the other should be positive. So what's the slope of this line? You're going to pull out of this. M is what? Three. Of this line. Not our line, this line. Negative 1 over 3. Right. The slope of this line, this blue one, is negative 1 over 3. The opposite of negative is positive. Right? That's what the opposite part is. Opposite reciprocal. Opposite of negative is positive. Reciprocal of 1 third is 3 over 1. Okay. Okay, it's kind of like a big important thing for slopes of parallel or for parallel lines. The, you know, in math we, we like numbers. The number that tells us that two lines are parallel is a slope. The slopes are the same. I think that's pretty straightforward. It's the absolute reciprocal thing that mixes people up sometimes. If we have perpendicular lines, we have opposite Reciprocal slopes. Okay, let me give you an example. Examples are nice. If I have one line that has a slope of three fourths, then the perpendicular line has a slope of what? One line has a slope of three fourths. A perpendicular line, a line that's perpendicular to a line with a three four slope, but have a slope of what? Four four or negative four over three. Negative. Oh, yes. Negative four over three. Negative four over three. So if I were to quickly try to draw a perpendicular line, that line has to have a slope. What what is the slope of this line? No, that was just this example. Right. It could have been a less tricky question. Okay, so this guy right here, we want to find the slope uh, or the uh, the equation of that line, so we can find the, the y-intercept. So again, or let, let's do it with the point-slope form. Okay, that's been suggested. That's this one. Y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. Either way, we're going to come up with the same thing. Okay. Well, this is a variable. This is a variable, right? These are actual x and y values. Do we know a y value on this line? Yes. Which one? Negative 3. Right there, that point right there. So minus negative 3, y minus negative 3, equals m, which is 3, times x minus what? Negative 4. That is a point on the line as well. Well, that's the x y plus 3 equals, because this will be positive, so we have 3x plus 12. We have y by itself, so it'll look like y equals mx plus b, so that we'll know what b is, so we can write that's what b is. So subtract 3 from both sides, 3x plus 9. So what's b? b is 9. b is 9. Slope is 3. y intercept is 9. 
Got one more like this. Are there any questions? Trying to write the equation, y equals mx plus b. Whether we write y equals mx plus b, that's like uh, this one, which goes with this one. We write y equals mx plus b and plug in the slope, and plug in the x, and plug in the y, and solve for b. Or we use the point slope form. And then just get y by itself. Like It's the same either way, whichever you like. Point slope form is, is helpful later on. We just use it today in calculus. Uh, you use it at other times. But in this case, not even either way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is not about this, but uh, how long will we be using Khan Academy? Um, we're feeling it out. We're trying to see how it's working. People like it. Some people like it. Some people would like to improve on it somehow. And I'm trying to figure out what's the best for everybody. Yes, sir. So it's saying that some of these things on here are late. If you've done it on Khan Academy, I'll see it there. That's where I check it. All right. Thank the you. Google Classroom is, is the tool you can to, yeah, and to organize all that stuff. If you want it to not say late, just click on the assignment, click on mark it, and done. It will not say late anymore. All right, next one. Oh, these kind. Let me try and uh, all right, so I'll just uh, actually. You should. I mean, it's it's really important that you should you should have scrap paper next to you, even as you're working on the computer. So let's get out a piece of scrap paper and a pencil. And let's just do this pen and paper. Okay. trying to write this equation, right? Because if we had this equation where this line, which is perpendicular, so something like that, so you're not very close to that. Uh, but if we have the equation of that line, then we could just look right there. That's m. That's what would go right there. And this would be b. That would be the slope. That would be the y-intercept. If it was written in slope-intercept form, that information would be very easy to access. All right. So. We want to know M and we want to know B. Okay? Um, but we don't know B, but we do know what M is, right? M is? Negative. Negative 1 over 3. Because this guy here, okay, I want you to pay close attention to this. This guy has a slope of 3. Okay? Now, once I know that, I don't need to worry about this equation anymore. Okay? So don't make the mistake of using this, uh, this minus 5. Because it has nothing to do with the line we're trying to find. The only thing it, that has to do with the line we're trying to find is a slope. Exactly. Yeah, but it's also perpendicular. So wherever the slope like is, that's it has to be on the opposite side of that. Uh, well, like, not the opposite side. Yeah. It's got to go the opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the only piece of useful information that comes from this line is the slope, so that we can know that our slope is what. Um, Gotta be negative, like you said. Negative three. So you just plug that into the equation. We also plug into the equation x is seven and y is negative two. That's what this function will do. When you give it seven, it will give you out negative two for y. So negative two for y is equal to negative one third times. 7 plus b. So far, so good? No. Okay. Plug in the x, plug in y, plug in the slope. I don't know, we're going to figure out what b is. So I have negative 2 equals negative 7 thirds, right, plus b. Now we'll add 7 thirds to both sides. And do negative 2 over 1 plus 7 thirds. To add these, common denominator. common denominator. So this is going to be what over 3? 6. 6 over 3. No, no. Yes, 6 over 3, exactly. 
6 over 3, right? 6 divided by 3 is 2. Same as it was. Negative 6 over 3 plus 7 over 3. What's that leave us? 1 third. 1 third. Negative. Oh. So b is 1 third. So the equation is y equals negative 1 third x plus 1 third. The slope, what's the slope of our line? Just now? And y intercept? So by writing the equation in slope intercept form, slope and y intercept are right there. I gave you the equation of a line right there. I gave you a point that some other line goes through. And I tell you that it's perpendicular or parallel, and we can find the equation of that line. Okay? Any questions about that? Different kind of problem. Are these lines parallel? They're perpendicular. Are they the same exact line, or are they not any of those things? Let's just run through a quick little like, checklist again. If they're parallel, what would have to be true if they're parallel? Same slope. Same slope. It looks like I'm going to need the slope. Need to know the slopes of both of these lines. Uh, if they're perpendicular, what will we have? Opposite reciprocal. Kind of shorten those off. Opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay, so how will I find the slopes of these lines? Negative 4 divided by 4. Negative 1. Okay. We're going to divide both of these things by 4. X divided by 4 is uh, the same as 1 fourth X. Okay. 2 divided by 4, 1 half. We're almost there. We don't want negative Y equals, we want Y equals, right? So whether we divide by negative 4 up here or at this stage we just divide by negative 1, it's all the same y equals negative one-fourth x minus one-half. So what's the slope of this line? Negative one-fourth, one it's right there. So the slope of this line needs to be? Positive four over one, or, or negative one-fourth, right? It could be parallel. It's just asking, what, what are these lines? Are they equal, are they parallel, are they perpendicular? Okay, so we'll do the other one. So what Destiny did was she just took the equation and converted it into slope-intercept form, and she said, well, there's the slope. I need to know the slope to know if they're parallel or perpendicular. All right. So this one, we'll start with okay. adding x. Adding x on both sides. Negative 4y equals x minus 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 1. So that? B is the 1? What do you mean B? Oh, B is the 1. Okay, B is the 1. Okay. So what do we conclude? Are these parallel, perpendicular, the same line, or not the same? Okay. Let's try this again. Parallel? Parallel. They have 
the same slope. So if two lines have the same slope, they gotta be parallel, right? They must not intersect each other. One little caveat that we'll see here in a minute. So we gotta find the slopes, so we have to write them in slope intercept form, and when we see the slopes, we can know whether they're parallel, perpendicular, the same, or nothing. to convert to slope intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b. So we got to get y by itself. Somebody maybe from this side of the room is going to help me get this, get this equation so y is by itself. Subtract five from both sides. Subtract five to cancel that? Uh, yeah, just, but don't take the y over. Well, let's look at, let's say like 5y equals 20 or something. If I wanted to cancel that 5, would I subtract the 5? Oh, you would divide. Divide. And I would leave that to last. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. But there's something we could add, subtract to both sides. What is that? What could we do with either addition or subtraction to so cancel out and leave the other side? Yeah? The four. Certainly we could add four to both sides and it would move over to the left side, but I want y to be like more by itself. And if I add four, it's like putting more stuff over there with the y, right? Maybe the negative five. Okay. The negative five x, how do I cancel out the negative five x? Uh, Add five x. Add five x. So we are now with five y equals five x minus four. Now we're at that last step. Yeah. Divide by five. Divide by five. Y equals five times by five is one. 1 times x, 1 over 1 if you like, minus 4 divided by 5, 4 fifths. All right, so the slope of this line is 1. 1, 1 over 1, whatever you like. All right, converting this guy to slope intercept form. How would we convert this to slope intercept form? Y by itself, so let's cancel something out on that side, right? That's it. Subtract by 5x. Subtract 5x, so you get negative 3y equals negative 5x plus 4. Almost there, that last step. Divide to negative 3, thank you. Y equals negative 5 divided by negative 3 is positive 5 thirds x. 4 divided by negative 3, that gives us a negative 4 thirds. So what's the slope of this line? Five three. M equals 5 over 3. Here, m equals 1. So are they parallel or perpendicular? Mm -hmm. They're neither. They're not parallel, nor are they perpendicular. They don't have the same slope, and they don't have opposite reciprocal. All right, one more time. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Negative y equals negative 2x plus 4. Divide by negative 1 on both sides. y equals positive 2x minus 4. Or y equals negative 2x plus 5. Okay, divide by 4 y equals negative one half x plus five fourths. So what's the slope of this line? Two, right, two. And what's the slope of this line? Negative one. So are these parallel? 
No, they're not parallel because they don't have same the slope. same slope. Are they perpendicular? Yeah. Yes, because yeah. they have. <laughs> okay, so this is 2 over 1, and this is negative 1 over 2. Right. Opposite reciprocals. How to get equal lines? It's exactly the same. Yeah, the equations are exactly the same. So here's one that's close. Let's go back to this one, which goes along with this one. Okay, I think, yeah, we found that they were, we found that they were parallel. But if they were, if their y-intercepts were the same, then not only would they have the same slope, but they had the same y-intercept, and they would intersect each other all the time. Okay, all the time. Like, let's look at, equals 3 fourths x plus 2. I have y intercept of 2, slope of 3 fourths, of 3 over 4. Okay, there's that line. I'm going to call this one red. Y intercept of 2, slope of 3 fourths, exactly the same line. So they're not perpendicular because they don't cross each other at 90. They have the same slope, but they're not parallel because they're just the same line, just one line on top of the other. They actually intersect each other always at every point on the line that's intersecting the other line. So now we have to know if we have equation of a line and a point on another line and then it's parallel we know to pull the slope from this line over here it's exactly the same if they're perpendicular we know that we take the opposite reciprocal and use it in the equation of the line and we can know everything we need to know about that line and if we want to know if two lines are parallel or perpendicular we have to look at their slopes we have to find their slopes somehow the easiest way would be to put it in slope intercept form So it's going to add just some help from what seemed to be difficult for some. Uh, make sure that if you don't have that parallel and perpendicular assignment finished, make sure to do it. Okay, and then work on today's, which is uh, we're revisiting some things we've actually done in other assignments. Okay, we've already written the equations, but it seems we need to work on it some more. So we're going to work on it some more. That's where we are. So yeah, the, 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 the top one, if you have the classroom, um, the very, very top.